it is often necessary to convert from one unit of measurement to another. Dimensional analysis will provide a method that will work in every situation. Let's take a look at three concepts used in dimensional analysis. The first is multiplying a number by one gives the same number. Here we have it in an algebraic expression. And here's an example. Seven times one is equal to seven. Or if we have some measurement, 500 milligrams times one is equal to 500 milligrams. Another concept that dimensional analysis relies on is the following. Any number, when divided by itself, equals 1. And an example here, 4 divided by 4 is equal to 1. 23 divided by 23 is 1. Or, again, if we have some measurement, 62 kilograms divided by 62 kilograms is equal to 1. A conversion factor is a statement of equivalence. Here we have 1 foot is equal to 12 inches or two pounds is equal to one kilogram. When we take these conversion factors as fractions, they're equal to one because we have the same quantity on the top or numerator of the fraction as well as on the bottom with a different unit. And here we have an example. Since 12 inches equals one foot, when we express it as a fraction, it's equivalent to 1. Order is not important. We could have just as well expressed this conversion fraction as 1 foot over 12 inches. In either case, it's equal to 1. Let's take a quick look at fractions, some concepts that we need for our dimensional analysis. And the first is, all numbers are understood to have a denominator of 1. 3 is equal to 3 over 1. 81 milligrams is equal to 81 milligrams over 1. When we multiply fractions together, we multiply the numerators together to get the new numerator, and multiply the denominators together to get the new denominator. In this example, we have 2 thirds times 5 sevenths. Using the rule for multiplying fractions, we'll multiply the numerators, 2 times 5, and multiply the denominators, 3 times 7. Simplifying, we end up with 10 21sts. Of course, working with fractions, we always want to reduce or simplify fractions. And here's an example of a fraction that can be reduced since. 15 fortieths can be broken down into 3 times 5 for the product of factors equaling 15. And 8 times 5 multiplies to equal 40. Once doing that, we now see that we have a common 5 in the numerator and the denominator. And if we separate these into two fractions, Further, we see that 5 over 5 is equivalent to 1, and 1 times anything is that fraction. We've thus reduced the original fraction. Here's another example of multiplying two fractions together, still using the rule of multiplying numerators together over the multiplication of the denominators, but instead of multiplying right away, we're going to break down 9 into its prime factors of 3 times 3. Likewise, in the denominator, 6 can be replaced with 2 times 3 and 25 with 5 times 5. And then looking at these terms that we have here, the factors, canceling out common factors since 3 over 3 is equal to 1. And likewise, we have a 5 in the numerator and a factor of 5 in the denominator. 5 over 5 is equal to 1, leaving a 3 in the numerator and a 2 times 5 or 10 in the denominator. So let's put this all together and look at an example. Recall measurement times 1 is equal to an equivalent value. And here we have 3 feet times 1, of course, is equal to 3 feet. But recognizing 1 can also be equivalent to any number over itself. 
And the fact that we're multiplying three feet by a fraction, it's best if we express three feet as a fraction. We know any number can be expressed as a fraction by putting a denominator of one. Then, using our rule for multiplying fractions together, we multiply the numerators together, so we have three times six over the product of the denominators, one times six. Simplifying, we end up with 18 feet over six, and if we simplify 18 divided by six, we're back to the three feet. Now we started with three feet and we ended up with three feet, so we didn't do any conversion, but we're using those concepts that dimensional analysis relies on. Multiplying by one, the fact that we have the same term over the same term is equal to one. Any number can be expressed as a fraction with a denominator of one. And further, the rule for multiplying fractions together. Well, let's take a look at our first example. They're asking us to convert five feet into inches. The first thing we'll want to do is to find a conversion factor. 12 inches equals one foot will allow us to convert our feet into inches. Since these are equivalent values, we can express them as a conversion factor fraction, which has a value of one. Next, we'll replace the information in the following equation. Take the given measurement, multiply it by one, will give us an equivalent value. Since we're going to be dealing with fractions, we'll express that given information, five feet as a fraction, with a denominator of one. Further, we recognize that we want to cancel out the feet and express this in terms of inches. So here are the two conversion factor fractions, and the one that we will use is the one that has feet in the denominator so that it will cancel out. So here is our special one that we're going to multiply our given value by. Multiplying the fractions then, we cancel out common factors in the numerator and the denominator. Feet cancel out, leaving inches in the numerator, which is an indication that we have set this up correctly, since inches is the dimension that we're after. Next, we multiply the numerators together, multiply the denominators, Multiplying by ones or dividing by ones aren't going to change anything. Simplifying the numerator, we end up with 60 inches over one or an equivalent value to our five feet is 60 inches. In this next example, they're asking us to convert 190 pounds into kilograms. To begin the process, we'll take the given information and express it as a fraction. We're going to multiply it by a 1, and the 1 will be a conversion factor fraction that has pounds in the denominator. Looking for a relationship between pounds and kilograms, we find the following. Expressing these two equivalent factors as a fraction, we'll put the 2.2 pounds in the denominator and the 1 kilogram, an equivalent measurement in the numerator recognizing that this fraction is equal to 1. Next, in preparation for multiplication of these two fractions, we'll cancel out common factors. Pound in the numerator cancels out pound in the denominator. Multiply numerators, multiply denominators, and again, multiplying by 1 does not change the value. So we still have the 190 over 2.2. Final step. Do the indicated division, numerator 190 divided by the denominator 2.2 with a result of 86.4 kilograms, which is equivalent to the initial 190 pounds. Sometimes we have conversions that require multiple steps. Let's take a look at an example. A patient is to receive 300 milligrams of aspirin. On hand are five grain aspirin tablets. How many tablets should the patient receive? This problem will start no different than the previous examples with the given information expressed as a fraction. We'll multiply it by a conversion factor fraction so that our milligrams cancel out. The question is asking us to have our answer in tablets. We need to find a relationship between milligrams 
and it sounds like perhaps grains and then grains to tablets. Doing some research, we find there are 60 milligrams equivalent to one grain. Expressing these equivalent values in a conversion factor fraction, we put that milligram factor in the denominator, the one grain in the numerator, canceling out the common factor of milligrams from the numerator and the denominator, we now have our value in grains. Instead of simplifying this, we're going to continue on and set up the next conversion fraction that will allow us to answer the question. From the problem, we have the given information relating grains to tablets. We want to eliminate grains, so we will put the grain factor in the denominator, the equivalent value of one tablet in the numerator, recognizing that this fraction has a value of 1, as well as the previous one. Canceling out common units, grains cancel out, leaving a unit of tablet, an indication that this is set up correctly. Then, following through with multiplication of the fractions by multiplying the numerators, which is 300, multiplying the denominator values, 1 times 60 times 5 is 300, Simplifying the division 300 divided by 300 results in one tablet, the final answer to the question.